hopefully this will be our last recording on uh, uh, PK and PD of asthma. We're going to talk about theophylline. So this is really going to be all about pharmacokinetics of theophylline. As I said, it's not used that often anymore to treat uh, asthma, but it's a great example of a one compartment model linear pharmacokinetic dosing and it's often you'll see questions on board exams and on this drug even though it's not using it much anymore um what theophylline has a fairly narrow therapeutic range between 5 and 20 milligrams per liter um some people say that it's actually more like 5 to 10 but some people do respond uh, 10 to 20 and don't have side have uh, any side effects. Toxic side effects you see with theophylline. Theophylline is in the same family with caffeine. So if you think about if you've had too much caffeine, what happens? You get your heart races. Um, so you have cardiovascular excitation. So if you take that further, you start out with your heart rate increasing then eventually you can have arrhythmias and um, even worse than that as you move up the spectrum for cardiovascular excite excitation. Um, you also have what? Your brain, the reason you, t you drink coffee to get the caffeine sometimes is for the stimulation of the brain. So you also have CNS excitation, which of course we utilize um, initially, but as you can imagine, if you take that out some more, you start, you could have seizures and go on to coma and death with too much theophylline. So there, it is, can be quite toxic. Um, so we're shooting for a certain therapeutic window. The bioavailability of theophylline is 100%. Well, it can be lower than that, but we're going to assume a bioavailability of 100% or 1%. Uh, theophylline can also be given as its ethyldiamine salt, which is called aminophylline, which is usually the form that's given um, when you give it in an intravenous formulation. So we often give aminophylline then, which is basically a salt, salt form of theophylline. For every uh, milligram of aminophylline that you give, you're actually getting only 0.8 milligrams of theophylline. So whatever you give of aminophylline, 80% of it is actually theophylline. So I always try to keep in terms of theophylline. So if you're giving 100 milligrams of aminophylline, you're going to multiply that times 0.8 to get your theophylline dose, which would be 80 milligrams in this case. So multiply the salt form, which is 0.8, times aminophylline to get the amount of theophylline that you have. Volume of distribution of theophylline is about a half a liter per kilogram. Remember that's less than total body water, so it's a relatively small volume of distribution. Clearance is about 0.04 liters per kilogram per hour, but this varies a whole lot, and we'll get into that in a minute. Half-life is about eight hours. Again, if the clearance is variable, so is a half-life. But about eight hours isn't a bad way to think about theophylline. So you're dosing every two to three, two to three times a day with aminophylline or with theophylline for most patients. Um, theophylline clearance changes quite a bit with age. Um, if you have a premature baby, and theophylline is given to premature babies to stimulate. Um, lung function, um, you can see that it's, um, as far as its clearance, it's the lowest of all the uh, clearances listed here. So a premature baby, there, this drug is cleared by the liver. Did I say that already? I'm sorry if I didn't. It's cleared primarily, well, 100% really by the liver. And so the liver is not as um, developed in a premature child as it is in a uh, child that's a year to 10 years old. And here it's actually the highest clearance as far as liters per hour per kilogram is 0 0.095 for a child. As they get into their teen years, it slows down a little bit and then as an adult is where we got our um, 0 0.04 
as you can see, is what's noted here, 0 0.04 liters per kilogram per hour. Now, there's lots of things that can mess with the clearance of theophylline. Smoking. Um, one of the primary um, enzymes responsible for the clearance of theophylline is the same one that's responsible for chocolate and, and caffeine, and that's um, the CYP enzyme uh, 1A2. We know that smoking increases the amount of 1A2 around. So in order to account for a patient that smokes, you would take the clearance that you calculate and multiply it times 1.6. It increases it by 60%. So you take the, the, the clearance that you calculated using the, the weight and age, and then you multiply that times 1.6, which increases it by 60%. CHF decreases the clearance of theophylline by about half. So if they smoke and have CHF, you'd multiply it times 1.6 and 0.5. You'd end up with a little bit plus 0.1, really. I guess um, you'd end up with it being fairly, these would negate each other to a certain extent. Actually, oh, we'll get into that in a minute. Cystic fibrosis will also increase the clearance. Um, acute pulmonary edema will decrease it. Acute viral illness will decrease it. Severe COPD will decrease it. Cirrhosis will decrease it. If they're obese, you should use ideal body weight for determining clearance. That should actually be on the other table. So what you do is take the clearance and multiply it by whatever factors are appropriate as far as disease states for your patient. There are also many drugs that will alter the clearance. And again, you just multiply the factor. The only one here that increases is phenobarbital, Phenytoin and rifampin all increase the clearance of theophylline. All the others decrease the clearance of theophylline, including uh, flu vaccine, which you may not think of as a drug. Okay, let's do a case. RJ is an 80 kilogram, 50 year old man seen in the ER with asthma unresponsive to epinephrine. What loading dose should be given to target a concentration of 10 milligrams per liter of theophylline? Well, a loading dose is just filling up that volume, right? Filling up our beaker. So volume times your target concentration, which would be 10 milligrams per liter, um, would give us our loading dose. But what's this salt S and F in the denominator? Well, if you're giving uh, aminophilin, you need to consider the salt form, which in this case is gonna be 0.8 of anything that we give of, the off of aminophilin is gonna have to be uh, we're going to have to account for that salt form. And remember, bioavailability, if we're giving something orally, the bioavailability is about one, so it shouldn't matter in this case, but it might if we are giving another form. So our target concentration is 10 milligrams per liter, so that's going to go in here. Our volume distribution is a half a liter per kilogram. If the patient's 80 kilograms, then our volume is going to be 40. So 40 is going to go in here. 40 times 10, I think I don't even need a calculator. We're going to have a loading dose of 400. That's if we're giving um, theophylline. If we're giving aminophilline, however, we have to count for that salt form that for every milligram of aminophilline, we've only got 0.8 of theophylline. So we would put our 0.8 in for our salt form into our equation. And instead of giving 400 milligrams of theophylline, we would give 500 milligrams of aminophilline. Okay, after giving the loading dose, what maintenance aminophilline, IV, now aminophilline IV dose rate would you recommend for RJ to maintain that 10 milligram per liter? So we just gave a loading dose to get to 10 milligrams per liter. But then we're going to need to give an ongoing dosing regimen to get a constant CSS average of 10 milligrams per liter of theophylline. So here we use peanut butter, right? Or I mean jelly. CSS average is equal to bioavailable dose rate over clearance. Oh, what's this S? This S wasn't here before. We usually talk about bioavailable dose rate over clearance. S is just the salt form. So again, since we're using aminophilin, 
we're going to have to put in that salt form of 0.8 in, into our equation. We know our target concentration is going to be 10 milligrams per liter. That's what we're shooting for. If it's an adult, we're going to use a 0 0.04 liters per kilogram per hour. <laughs> Multiply it times their weight of 80 kilograms, and we're going to have a clearance of 3.2 liters per hour. We're going to assume that they don't have any disease states or aren't taking any drugs. And if it's given IV, we don't have to worry about bioavailability. So we can solve for our dose rate by just plugging and chugging this equation. So our dose rate will be 40 milligrams per hour of aminophilin. Go, slide, go. What if RJ also had severe COPD, CHF, and smokes? What dose rate of aminophilin would you recommend, again, to get that CSS average of 10 milligrams per liter? Well, in this case, we'll take the same approach. The clearance is 3.2 liters per hour, but we have to account for smoking, which will multiply it times 1.6 COPD, so we'll multiply it times 0.8, and CHF times 0.5. So we take our 3.2 liters per hour and multiply it times 1.6, times 0.8, and times 0.5 to get a clearance of 2 liters per hour. Again, accounting with our aminophilin salt form and giving it IV, we don't worry about the bioavailability. We plug and chug for dose rate, and now we're only going to give 25 milligrams per hour versus the 40 that we were giving over here, right? Yeah. So you just take whatever disease states or drugs that they're on and multiply the clearance times the factor. If that were all fine, when will RJ be at steady state and what dose of oral the theophylline, so we're no longer giving the salt form, would you recommend? Well, when will they be at steady state? That's all about half-life, isn't it? 0 0.693 times volume over clearance will give us our half-life. Again, we assume the volume will be about 40 liters, and clearance we just determined to be 2 liters per hour. So our half-life is going to be about 13.85 hours, so about 14 hours. Multiply it times 5, it's going to be about 70 hours. So that's about, what, uh, 4 or 5 days? No, not four days. It's going to be between three and four days, right? Now, if we're giving 25 milligrams per hour of aminophilin, that would be 600 milligrams per day of aminophilin. But 600 milligrams per day of aminophilin, we'd multiply this times 0.8 to get how much theophilin we'd give. So it would be 480 milligrams of theophilin per day. So we would give probably 200 milligrams or 300 milligrams of theophylline BID. Okay, so for your test, you're going to want to understand that genomics can affect the dynamics and kinetics of these drugs we use to treat asthma. You're also going to want to be able to do theophylline dosing. So I'm going to post some, the we're going to work on some theophylline problems, and I'll post the key when we're done working on them in class. But I want you to be ready to do some theophylline problems in, uh, in class on Monday, which I've uh, handed out to you, or and I think I'm going to post them. I think it's been posted here on Blackboard, too. Thank you. Bye-bye.